G'day folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show, joined as usual by myself, Ben, and my colleague, Lauren. Hello. If you haven't joined us before, or if you have and haven't yet done so, please subscribe, either via YouTube or your favourite podcast app. And you can join in on the conversation, either on YouTube, uh, the community, or comments on this video, and also on our Snowy's camping show we'll just call it the snowies facebook group because yeah. we're potentially going for a name change there so yeah and that may have taken place by the time this gets published but mm-hmm. jump on there with a bunch of like-minded campers where you can share ideas ask for advice stories photos whatever you like yeah so today we're talking about sleeping mats but we want to chuck our thing we did new for this season mm-hmm. little segments so we've mm-hmm. got a uh or well, the end of this Episode we've got a story of the week. Our usual mm-hmm. just random tidbit that we waffle about something we found something. interesting. Mm-hmm. But to start with new gear, we want to touch on new gear that is coming out or has come out. Um, Rumours we've heard of exciting things. So the main one, and we had a bit of a discussion just before this episode on this, but Petzl have redesigned their headlamp range now. Yeah, I, all I love, updated. As we talked about before, I love Petzl headlamps. Mm-hmm. They're the mm-hmm. one. And I know I've been in the industry for the outdoor industry for careful <laughs> um, quite a while, a long time, uh, well over a decade anyway. Yeah, yeah. And Petzl has just been the one consistent headlamp that never really. This is probably the biggest change I've seen mm. in, the, in the Petzl headlamps. But they, they've always just worked. They've always been yeah. good value. My wife has got a, a Petzl headlamp that I reckon we've had for two decades, and it still works. Yeah, mine's seven plus years. Yeah, and yep. the latest series isn't a complete – well, it is a complete redesign, but there's not – it's not – in terms of functionality and the range, yeah. it's still the same naming convention. They still have the same simple functionality. They're not trying to – A re- one press button, one, it's, nothing it's fancy, three, nothing crazy. Two, two or three settings and a flashing setting and it goes on, probably a red light. Mm-hmm. There's none of this hold down to dim, double click for this setting, double click for that setting, pocket lock and all, all of those things. It's just simple to use headlamps. Mm. They followed the same um, naming convention so you, you can still pick up a ticker or, or a, a um, tequila or an actic. Uh, yep, you mm-hmm. can still pick those up except they're just redesigned. They look pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Apparently they're all a bit higher in lumens though, which I think is probably um, what you would expect because LED chips and technology, yeah. you know, goes further. So a modern or a, a latest model of something will tend to have more lumens. More more light, more battery power. More as, light, as more battery technology. power, exactly. Um, Shape's but, a little bit different and sh- just ha- yeah. the physical appearance is a little bit different. So they now don't look like where you used to be able to recognise a petzl headlamp because yeah. they always had the same look. They now look a little bit different. A little tiny bit different. Not um, drastically, but no, yeah, no, and still feel really good quality. Still have the same tilting head. There's a few little updates like um, glow, um, reflective features and glowing bezels and that sort yeah. of thing. But the main move is that they they used to have I think the actic. There was an actic and an actic core, core that had the rechargeable battery. They've now that extended that out to their ticker headlamp as well, and I believe that. Tikina, which I don't recall well, if it used to be, is also compatible. Actually, prior, all of the headlamps were compatible with the core rechargeable battery, but it was only the Actic core that came with the is rechargeable that- battery provided. But you could buy it separately for, and it would work with any of your other models. Mm-hmm. Now you can get the Ticker also as a core model that so has the battery Tikina. provided. So, so you the- have the Actic, Actic core, Ticker, Ticker core, and then you have the Tikina. Yep. But you can still obviously – Optional upgrade um, down the track. You can buy it separately. Yeah, yeah you can buy so it separately. The, so the non core models just run off. Yeah. Just standard AAA batteries. Correct. And I know yeah. we waffled earlier about that sort of jazz. So I'll make it quick. But in my experience with headlamps that come with a sealed battery unit, even if they're rechargeable, once they're dead, maybe 12, 18 months down the track, if you're using them a lot, you have no option but to throw that whole thing out because the battery mm. can't be replaced. So something that I love about the Petzl's is, like I said, I have a Tekina that's seven years old. You, it still runs. Yep. Put a new battery and even if I use a rechargeable battery, the rechargeable battery dies. I just buy a new rechargeable battery pack that will sit in there. Yep. It's really awesome. Plus they've reduced a bunch of uh, plastic in their design yeah, so and they the, don't use plastic in their packaging yeah, anymore no, apparently. There used to be a lot of plastic in the packaging. That's gone. Yeah. And you don't really 
can't really visibly see it, but I think they've tried to yeah reduce the amount of plastic in like the body is, is yeah. what you're referring to. So so that's anyway, cool. New pencil headlamps. We've probably ranted on about that too long, but um, they are really good value. They're not overpriced or anything. Mm. They're just good value yeah. headlamps, and they work. Um, Austral Fast Frame Three. Now we know this common swagger. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, it's I, just a rip off swagger. Yeah. <laughs> you said you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. But well, it, yes, it is. It's a little bit like oh. That's a popular thing as it's a business. The, the no, yeah, businesses of course, right. of course. That's a popular category. We'll jump in on that as well. Um, so same sort of thing. It's that. S- similar concept. It's kind of that s- swent kind of category. It's not. I never <laughs> want to hear that word again. We put it that I, to bed. Because I knew you'd react. It's done. You it's a put 10. it to bed. I've not put it to bed. Fine. Anyway, it's and reason it's swent is because when Coleman – brought out the swagger, they said it fills the void between a tent and a swag. They said swagger, I said swent. Anyway, um, Austria haven't gone down that path. They've just gone, we'll call it the Fast Frame 3. Fast Frame 3. Um, which is a compact, uh, basically, I guess it's kind of got the dimensions of like a hiking tent, a two to three person hiking tent, mm. but it's got a sturdy frame. It's got frame. the instant up frame it, like yeah, their Lumos yeah. tents or whatever. Yep. It's basically... You, when you're looking at it, it's essentially the same idea slash concept as the Swagger, but it's almost as if, like I've said this before, they've seen the Swagger, the Swagger's been out for a while, they've read reviews and seen what people's comments were and therefore made a tent that addresses those things but from their own range. So yeah. a couple of the things that people potentially might say, no, I don't heaps love this about the swagger. Well, Austrail have changed that in their yeah. in their version. So it's potentially worth looking at. I guess it's good because it gives you two options. Like two Does, good options. Yeah, it gives you two options. Both got slight differences that are going to see. Very similar. Yeah. But different options. And I mean that's always good, isn't it, in in any sort of um situation is having choice. Yep. And a new brand of gel was called Scratch. Yeah, with it's a just K, new to snowies. I think no colors and preservatives, which you'd love. Yep. Yep. You said that as if it was an accusation of some kind. But ultimately, it's not necessarily something that's going to appeal to heaps of people. More likely to be hikers, lightweight adventurers, bicycle tourists, people doing a lot of physical activity, um, gels, energy bars, hydration powder. I personally really like the hydration powder, even though I might not be going on an adventure or anything like that. We do a lot of camping, even in summer. And when you're driving a fair distance and it's hot, or maybe you've been at the beach all day and you're coming back to camp and everyone's just a little bit pink and having a drink bottle and just putting a scoop or two of yep. that powder in there. I mean, it's better than, in my opinion, it's better than Gatorade and all of that other yep. potential rubbish. If I offend anyone, I'm really sorry. Brands, um, brands. I don't know, whatever. whatever. That sort of electrolyte stuff. Yeah. It's just much nicer and it's good because it can help, just helps keep you yeah. hydrated through any situation. Yeah. I always have a, I always have a bag of hydration powder. Yeah, we all the time. We took it away with us. We ended up drinking iced tea most of the time because yeah. the kids ate, uh, drank. Sorry, but yeah, I think it's good to have that in the car. Yeah, definitely. So on to, on to today's um, topic, which is sleeping mat choices. Now we covered off on sleep system ratings in episode mm, eleven, which was with is that the Dean episode from Cedar Summit? Yeah, Cedar Summit, and we talked about a little bit um, about mats. Yeah, because mat mats being part of a system, and a system being a sleeping bag, a sleeping mat the pillow and then your liners and all that all kind of works together. Yeah. So we're just covering off on the mat side of it for this episode today uh, and are trying to point Honestly, out. Honestly, one of the biggest questions that I probably get is what sleeping mat should I choose? Yeah. And sometimes it's really hard to give someone a hard and fast recommendation, especially when it comes to sleeping mats, because I don't want to recommend something that when they actually get it, they don't they, like. They can't sleep on it, yeah. So when that happens, sometimes a lot of the times there's a questions of like, you know, how often are you going to go camping and how do you mm. camp and, you know, try and l- narrow it down to some choices. Yeah. Um, so thinking about those things if you're in the market for a sleeping mat so, uh, is really important. I, I've had, I get the question a lot as well and we do, mm. you and I do the product videos and people say, why don't you lay on it and tell us how comfortable it is? I, mean, I think you can equate that to going to like, dreamland or sleep sleepy whatever yeah. sleep silly or whatever the where i probably overcomplicated that wherever you go to buy a mattress for home right you go there with your partner 
you'll lie on the bed. I mean, they've got beds out there now that have different comfort yeah, on each yeah. side, right? Mm-hmm. So who are we to say this mat's going to suit you? Because we don't know. It's, yeah. it's a good mat. It provides most people with a comfortable night's sleep. We can't make any guarantees. Because if you lie on one and I lie on one, you might be like, that's the best mat I've ever laid on. And I might be like, what the hell? Yeah. You know, vice versa. It's it's very personal. It is very personal. So So it's it's hard. hard, (laughs) It's hard to recommend a mat purely from a comfort perspective. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to recommend a mat based on requirements that isn't subjective. The the one thing you can do with most mats though is adjust how much air is in it. That's true. So for the most part, if it's a, inflatable mat that you can seal air into it, you can adjust it to your own comfort. Yeah. So we're talking XPED, Mega Mat, Senpai Monster Mat, all of those thick ones you can adjust. So we'll try and cover off on things today that you might want to consider if you're looking at it online, but we do recommend, if possible, mm. get into a shop somewhere, lie on a few so you get an f- idea for yeah. how it feels. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And even maybe just check around. I mean, we're assuming that people don't have mats, but I know a lot of the people who listen to us already will have a sleep system. But, you know, it's even been something that's relevant for me because in the not too distant past in in our Facebook group, I just really wanted to hear about what people use for their sleep systems and mats because I need to upgrade the kids' stuff. Yep. So, you know, asking friends or family or even if people that you know who camp have gear to try their mats out or seeing what other people do, that can also be um, a, be a handy thing to – Yeah. A handy resource. So uh, things to consider, weight and hmm? in particular pack size. Weight probably, and pack probably size. hand in hand because there are some mats that are quite comfortable like um, hmm. Austral do their – is it a leisure mat? I think they call it those blue ones. Uh, we don't sell as many of them now. Are you talking about the fat mats or are you talking about the OG like four-wheel drive the, the mats? The original ones, the which we're not seeing as many. They're not they're I don't not even bonded. think we – we don't even carry them they're, anymore. Yeah, I think other brands still do them. Okay. But they're not – they're a self-inflating mat, but they're not airtight as such. If you blew air into them, the outer's not actually bonded to the inner, so if you blew it up, it'd yeah. be a big balloon. Now, they're quite comfortable. Quite durable because they're not airtight. You can't put holes in them, but they're massive. They're massive and, and heavy, they're heavy. Hard to roll up. Really hard to roll Affordable. up. Affordable. Um, but if you get two doubles, that's the boot of a sedan full. I think the Darchi all-terrain mats are made of that style. That's, and often that's it has like the softer top, but the sides yep. and the base are like a PVC, PVC. almost. Yep. Um, very plasticky. So they're but good. Yeah, weight and pack size, really important consideration. Yeah, yep. you need space to pack those. And if, you know, like that's come up in the recent discussion that we've had with the community, if you're just one person or there's just the two of you, totally different. Mm. But if you've got a couple of kids, yep. like in my case, four, Mm. and you are looking at those mats, I wouldn't be able to take anything else with me. No. That's you know, it. they're that's, massive. That's a, that's a, yeah. Yeah. Like a station wagon's boot full just of mats. Just of mats. Yeah. Exactly. So um, the in-use thickness. In-use thickness, yeah. Now this is important. I guess if it's really firm foam, the in-use thickness isn't as important as, um, and I'll use, say, the XPED Mega Mat as an example. Yeah. Now that. It's 10 centimetres thick, but it's been caught out and it's caught mm. out so that it's designed to roll up small but still provide insulation and comfort yeah. when it's unrolled and be airtight. And you can pump that up really tight so you've got a nice firm sleeping surface on it. If yeah. you like a, a firm sleeping surface, that's fine. If you like a really soft sleeping surface, you can let air out, but at some point you're going to start to hit the bottom. Yeah. So a five centimetre mat that's obviously going to happen sooner than a 10 yeah. centimetre. So if you like a soft mat, you need to go for something thicker Yeah. Um, in that self-inflating sort of version. Yeah. Um, Mex, uh, Expert do a 15 centimetre. And so do Austrail. And Austrail do as well. Which is, has pretty good reviews. It's fairly new in the sense that I reckon maybe in the last six months we've seen them, but they're very good. Um, they They are still – you know, a reason they do still have a reasonable price, but in terms mm. of a 15 centimeter mat, they're mm. like an, a good budget entry pl- price. But the comments from people in terms of the quality and the use versus the price have been amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of value yeah. for money, they seem brilliant. A 15 centimeter mat still gets bulky, though, it starts to get yeah, the more fun. Definitely. The bulkier it is. Our value is an important one. And I know we've talked about it a lot on the podcast, but it's especially important if you. Uh, own a sleeping bag that might sort of be on on the boundary of 
being warm or cold, depending on if you're pushing the limits of your sleeping yep. bag. So if you have a bag that's been tested to the EN standard, which is the international standard for comfort, temperature and ratings, um, those mat- those sleeping bags are tested on a mat with an R value of four, mm-hmm. which means that if you have a mat with an R value of two, the sleeping bag isn't going to be as warm as labelled because yep. your mat is not insulative enough. Yeah. So you need a mat of four or above for your sleeping bag. EN tested sleeping bag to be reliable. Yeah, reliable to the stand like the stamp Standard. standards. Yep. Um, and so that's something that's really important to consider, especially if you're hiking. Even though sort of obviously we're talking a bit more towards car camping and and stuff like that in mm-hmm. this episode. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, well. I'm going to go and do cradle mountain hike and it's a zero degrees sleeping bag. That should be fine for me. Um, I'll take that and not consider that maybe their mats only a, a 2.5 yep. or something or even yep. a three and they freeze. Yeah. So. So our, our value being we've got a, do we, we haven't written the episode down. No. Um, how well the mat insulates from the ground. Correct. Underneath. So if yep. you put, if you sleep on cold ground in a 20 degree, minus 20 degree mm-hmm. bag, going to be cold yeah if you sleep in a cold on cold ground uh on a mat an r9 mat that's yeah. on cold ground you're going to be warmer because that mat is insulating from the cold underneath one thing i want to say here as well because it comes up a lot and surprisingly well i say it surprises me how often this question is asked but potentially i just take it for granted that i know this information because i work in this industry right but a lot of people think that for example the xped mats that have an r value of like 9.8 or mm-hmm. something that that means that it's going that that it's going to be really hot to sleep in in summer, yeah. but it doesn't work that way because the R value is purely the effectiveness of that mat to insulate between varying temperatures on either side of the mat. Mm-hmm. The mat itself isn't hot. No, the mats don't generate heat. It's not reflecting. It's heat not back reflecting to you. heat back to you. It's not doing any of that sort of stuff. So if you're worried about a mat with a super high R value making you hot in summer, it's not going to happen. As long as you've got an appropriate sleeping bag that isn't too hot for you, there won't be any issues. Yep. Yeah. So an air bed, for example, doesn't have an R value. That's None because be it's just empty inside. Yep. Yeah. And obviously price is something to consider. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, well, I mean, go I, by the reviews because, yeah. as you mentioned before, Oztrail, who in the past have made some quite affordable products that are still good value for money mm-hmm. but don't last as long as, say, someone that was twice the money. But yep. I think those Oztrail ones are quite seem to be quite good for the they price. They do seem to be really good, yeah. Exped um, or the Zempire, also mm-hmm. good for the price. It's mm-hmm. a step up. But then Exped, top of the rung. but. Just good all round. Good all round. I know yeah, someone who's had one for nearly 15 years or something. It's yeah, going I've strong. Got, not a mega mat, but a, an old duo sim or something. And it's going really well. Yeah. But in terms of sort of, in terms of the good quality sleeping mats that are like, you know what, well, I get a, a decent sleep on this that's almost as good as my mattress at home. You're not going to be spending 50 to 100 bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's, un- it's going to be a bit more than that. Two, probably what two hundred? Uh, this uh, and we're recording this in early twenty twenty three. Sort of two hundred dollars and yeah. up for a good mat. Yeah. No, that's um, not to say we talk about styles here. Yeah. Um, that's not to say an airbed's a bad thing. Airbeds are an affordable option. Yeah. And good for probably summer camping. Yeah. Um, pain in the bum if they get a hole because if they get a hole in them, you've got nothing to sleep on. My. Mm. My biggest gripe about the air mattresses, and when I say air mattresses, I'm talking about the classic purely made of plastic. They're like a giant balloon that's in a rectangle shape and just yep. stopped from from whatever. You know, the good old ones that you just fill up with air. Like float down a river on them kind of exactly, thing. Exactly, yep. a lilo. Yep. Right? Yep. My biggest gripe with those is that majority of people – end up with a puncture and Mm. they are the kind of mats that if there is a puncture, even if it's the tiniest, tiniest little thing, you won't be sleeping. You'll wake up in the middle of the night, you'll be on the floor. Um, They can puncture incredibly easy. Even the brands that are rugged and Mm. sort of say they're treated with puncture guard or they're puncture resistant. Yeah. Even just 
you know, a button or something on your clothing. If you roll over too hard, it could Mm -hmm. catch a bit of the plastic and just pull it a little bit and it creates a weakness. And they're just so susceptible to to Mm. being punctured. And I think a lot of inquiries we get is, well, I've used this twice and it's starting to go flat and Mm. I want a warranty. And it's like, well, if, if something is punctured after you've purchased it, it's not a warranty. War- a, a, a puncture, puncture if, on, if a, on a, a mattress. If there's a leak in a seam, if it's or along a, a seam or, or around like a that. valve or something relating to um, a manufacturing, manufacturing fault, yep. then yeah, of course it would be assessed under warranty because it hasn't been manufactured properly. But a mattress puncturing whilst you're using it is not mm. considered a manufacturing fault because it's not a, a fault of the manufacturer of the product. Yep. And I think that a lot of people sort of potentially purchase those mattresses because they're thinking, oh, they're a budget option and we've always used them as kids or whatever, but they're realistically only getting a couple of uses out of them Mm -hmm. or they're not performing as well as they should Mm -hmm. or they're, you know, they're feeling that in the next morning they wake up and they're half empty. Um, And in that sort of situation, I do feel like you do get what you pay for and it's worth the investment of maybe saving your pennies or borrowing a mat or something yep. and just getting. And by saying you get what you pay for, it doesn't mean don't buy an airbed. No. Just, just understand the shortcomings. Correct. Because you're still getting what you pay for. Yeah. You're getting a cheaper mat. Yeah. That potentially won't last as long. Yeah. Because what an airbed's sub $100, like 50 yeah. to 80 bucks or something like that for, for a and double. It t- and you know what? That sounds, to me, I sort of almost hate that that comes out of my mouth because fifty to a hundred dollars is a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? It's not like that's yeah. that's that's nothing. You know, for a lot of people, that's a couple of hours of of work. Mm. Um, and it's like, yeah, does it? I don't know. Yeah. How I don't know. Sort of what well, I'm, it's just sort well, of be aware of the limitations of it. Yeah, don't want to say don't buy it, but have a, a realistic expectation yeah. on on what to expect from it and. Go prepared to fix it. Yeah. If you get a hole, because you can fix an airbed. You did a video on how to fix an airbed. Exactly. Bed, it's not take a puncture. The most kit. complex thing is you, finding the damn hole. Exactly. Be really careful of where you are putting your mattress. Mm. Even potentially have a picnic blanket or something that mm. you put down before you put your mattress on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we've bashed airbeds. Air <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bash no, 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 them. No, no, I no, just no. no. But. It's there are if if you get something with foam fill, then if you get a hole, then you still got something to sleep on. You can keep yeah. going with your camping trip, but mm-hmm. that comes at extra cost. Yeah. Now there there are air beds um, or air mattresses um, from brands like Cedar Summit mm-hmm. that and are X-Bed. air filled and X bed mm-hmm. and have insulation in them. Some do, some don't, uh, which are aimed at the hiking sort of category. Yeah. Um, I think when you go down the hiking path, there's somewhat of an expectation that because it's made lightweight, it's more prone to punctures. So Usually those people go prepared for repairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're more for ultralight hiking yeah. ventures, which is probably not quite the focus of this. No. Um, Mind you, though, here. the sin mats um, that I think I mentioned to you before is pretty flexible. Like Sonia, someone who works with us in our in our office, she has a sin mat. She takes it travelling, so it's small enough to pack up. She wants to go and visit family or friends in Melbourne. She just chucks it in her bag. No, it's comfortable sin, enough. Sin mat's the orange one from Exped, yes, which has got it's, tubes and it's full of synthetic insulation. Yeah, but they don't. They're not made anymore. So I think the ones now, the current versions of them, maybe a Versa, or we don't stock sin mats oh, now. Okay, right. But the ones we have in our range are called the Versas or something. Okay. And they're ones that I've potentially been looking at because they're quite comfortable. They do a double as well. You know, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they they aren't necessarily only for hiking. Like some of the Cedar Summit, super lightweight, super small ones, of course, only for hiking. But I think there are some other ones that like even the Comfort Plus mm-hmm. that Cedar Summit do, that's really big rectangular. You could, especially if you're someone who's ultra light. Um, you're a car camper, you have a sedan, or maybe you do full driving, but you need to be quite minimalist and lightweight for your GBMs. You have a bunch of kids, you need to space save. There is sort of a category of mats that have a foot in hiking and a foot in camping and they're still suitable. And I think they're probably a bit underrated. That's probably a good segue to the next thing because we talk about foam mats and it, and it reminds me of the Dometic Pico Swags who mm-hmm. – 
come out with a self-inflating, uh, not self an inflatable mat inside. Yeah. And the swag's tiny, right? This is a canvas swag, not mm-hmm. quite as heavy duty fabrics, but it's a tiny swag. Mm-hmm. And now foam mats are somewhat indestructible. You can get punctures in them. You've always got a mat yeah. to sleep on, but they don't pack up small. And it's why swags pack up so big, usually because of the yeah, foam mat. Because the smaller the swags quite often have a less dense foam mat in it that isn't mm. as comfortable. Yeah. Now you can turn a, a lot of big chunky swags into a much smaller swag by adding the mat, like you said, then an inf- uh, air filled. Um, um, mat from yep. like a, it's kind of got that foot in hiking and a foot in camping. Mm. That's going to make that swag pack down way smaller because yeah. the mat you know flattens down to nothing rather than yeah. being big chunky foam. So yeah, um, but foam mats. Um, look, I've got a few old foam mats. They're old Austro ones that the kids use for sleepovers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's cats and stuff running around in the house, I can roll it out on the floor and now the cats aren't going to puncture it. Yeah. Um, we've used them for camping before, but they're bulkier. They're lightweight, so you could strap them to the roof in a, in a waterproof bag if you like. Mm. Um, they're affordable. They don't go flat, but yeah. they're bulky. That's Do you remember like the days when we were a kid and you just sort of slept on a glorified yoga mat? That those are one centimeter the closed cell phone. Close. Yeah, they're still around. They're really. I good know in. they're still around, but like when we were kids, yeah. that was what you got. Often your camp. I remember going on a hike with my dad's old. Like canvas haversack, there's no frame in it. It was yeah, like yeah. just wearing them. <laughs> because it was packed, it's just this ball on my back with two straps yeah. over my shoulders and a and one of those blue things strapped on top. And there you go, off you go. Off for a We're pretty lucky, aren't we, really? Nowadays. Nowadays yeah. with our camp sleeping options. Absolutely. It's pretty luxurious. Yeah. Part of me wonders what the next 10 years is going to bring in terms of technology for that sort of stuff. But anyway. Mm-hmm. The self-inflating uh, is yeah. kind of where it's at really. That's, yeah. that's the best balance of everything. They pack up. Small, they inflate. They, they pack say up small for what they are. Well, they are. Yeah, yeah. They self-inflating is a little bit of a misnomer because they, most of them pack up, uh, inflate most of the way by themselves. What, like 70, 80% by themselves? And then just need a little bit of air to, to yeah. yeah, pump it all the and way up. And for a lot of people, the way they self-inflate themselves is enough. Usually, yeah. But, you know, if you're, and especially for kids, but if you are an adult or maybe you're a side sleeper or, you know, you're a bigger person, you might need to put a bit of air in it. Yeah. And it's not really that big a deal. They're, they're airtight so the outside is bonded to the foam inside, which means you can blow them up tight. You don't get a ballooning of the of So the bonded fabric. means ultimately that the foam glued. inside is glued to the external material. Yep. So as it inflates, the external material is pulling the foam open as well. Yeah. Yeah. Does mean that you need to look after them because if you've got lots of border oils going into the foam onto yeah. the outer, then that can break that foam, that glue down, and then yeah. it debonds. Is that a word? De-bonds. Yeah, it is. yeah. De-bonds. And then it'll start to balloon up. But and it's also important to why, if you need to put more air in, you should consider doing it manually with your yeah, breath. A lot of stuff's antifungal. It's not like you're going to make the inside of your mattress moldy because that doesn't really exist mm. anymore. But using an electric pump, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, easy, I'll use an electric pump. But if you accidentally overinflate, you'll tear that bonding, you'll tear that fabric yep. away from the foam and then you'll get this air bubble on your mat and it'll just be hideous and you cannot fix it. At so just least, be cautious. Use a really basic 12-volt pump that yeah. doesn't have the guts to overinflate it. Don't go use your like – air compressor for your car because yeah, you'll, you'll for sure. tear it to pieces. And the other benefit of a self-inflating mat is there's foam in there and the, so they're still prone to punctures. Yeah. But if you do get a puncture overnight, you've still got some foam that you're sleeping on that's providing some insulation yeah. at least from underneath. So. In terms of width, another question we get a lot is that it doesn't correlate to residential sizes. So if you're buying a queen camp mat, it's not going to be the same size as your queen bed at home. If you're no. buying a double camp mat, it's not going to be the size – if you double camp at home, same with singles, king singles, et cetera. So realistically, I reckon single mats range anywhere from high 50s to sort yep. of low 60s right the way through to 75 to 80 on average. Yeah, I think maybe up to 90. For some I think for a there's single. one that you can get that's 90, okay. which is the Black Diamond Hexatherm 3D, Black Wolf Diamond 3D. It's the green one. Yep. That will fit perfectly in a swag, which is 900 wide. Yep. Um, doubles are one. Doubles are usually around 130, 132. Yep. And same with queens. Generally, if you see double and queen, they're interchangeable. I know it's confusing, it's confusing. but it depends what brand it is. Like, for example, 
an expert double mat versus a black diamond queen a hexatherm, but the standard red one, they're the same width. Yeah. One's called a queen, one's called a double. It doesn't yep. matter. The I hexatherm, think- I mentioned the hexatherm that is a 900 yep. wide mat swag. They do a 1500 wide. Which is all closer which is to a true double. Huge, which yeah. is closer to a true double. And I think Oz Trail Fat Mat is a 1500 as well. Okay. So the, we have seen in the last probably year a few coming out that are more true uh, queen sizes. But, yeah. And that's. But they're if, in if, the minority. So when. Yeah. So be aware if you're looking at a double, it's going to be around 130, 132. And just before you go, I want a double mat, just before you buy it. Yeah. Have a look at what space you've got in your tent as well. Because yeah. I know I've got an RV5 and I can't put two double mats next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd be about 130, I think. So it'd be the width. Yeah. So, well, because so, what is it? I think it's 260 wide in an RV5. And if you put two 132s together, then it's 164. But because the frame's on the yeah, inside, you lose about tight. five centimeters yeah. either way. Yep. So even if you do decide to shove it in, it's going to be squished on the edge. Yeah. So if yeah. you're then going through a queen in that mix, it's, you know, it's supposedly yeah. a five person tent, but those. Tent size ratings yeah. are based on like an individual lying there, sort of head to toe, not yeah. not on a big mat. So just consider that with the sizing. Yeah, big and 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 we have all of our sizes listed on our website, and I'm sure other retailers will do the same thing. But just be mindful um, that that basically, and also just because someone says, "Oh, it's a double," and someone else says, "Oh, it's a double," doesn't mean the size is going to be exactly check, the same. Just just check, triple check that check sort of stuff the, when you're choosing external dimensions on our website. Yeah. Uh, so fitted sheets, good segue. Um, so a double fitted sheet is going to be loose on a double self-inflating mat. Yeah. The queen's going to be too big. But hey, look, I put you can sheets get- in it, and they just they fit. They just fit loose. It doesn't fit, fit loose, like you're at home, but it still does a job. Especially fitted sheet, it just straps in underneath. You can get uh, specific fitted sheets from certain brands, like Black Wolf do one, yep. Xped do one. I think someone else does one off the top of my head. I can't remember on our website. Yeah, you yeah. can um, get specific fitted sheets for them. Otherwise, you like you say, you can just use a home double one. Yep. I recommend it wherever possible because it's a lot harder to clean a mattress than it is to chuck a sheet in the wash. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yep, absolutely. I use it all the time. Yeah. I set my swag up on my with a self-inflating mat up inside just like I make my bed at home. So it's yeah. a sheet and then a top sheet and then a quilt. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, mat couplers. So that's something that goes around the mats to hold them together. If you want to make a double yeah. out of two singles, which is a good way to make a probably more of a true queen, I suppose. If space isn't – yeah, if space isn't a consideration for you necessarily, a dub, an average double mat is what, 132, I think we've yep. just said. If you decide that you want a 75 centimetre wide mat and you get two of them, that's a 150 mat. Yep. I mean, you can buy 150 mats already, but then you've also got the flexibility of if one of you goes away for a weekend by yourself or you want to lend one to the kids or someone has a sleepover, there's a bit more flexibility there. But, yeah, mat couplers are a really great idea. But if you've got a double sheet that goes over that, it kind of holds them together anyway. So True. And also um, this is a good segue into other considerations, which is um, compatibilities with stretches. So obviously this is a mattress episode, so we're not delving into stretches necessarily. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, I want a double mattress to go on this double stretcher. Probably better that you don't get a double mattress to go on a double stretcher. Fully recommend those mat couplers and two single mats. It just allows those two single mats to sit really evenly between the central bar and the outside bar, but the coupler keeps them together and then you don't have to worry about that big hump in the middle. For those who don't quite understand that, all the double stretchers are basically two stretchers, but there's just one bar joining them in the middle. There's no... Yeah. I don't know of any. Oh, there is one there is that I've one. seen, but it's quite complex and requires a lot of tension to sort of create a big sort of trampoline yeah. to sleep on. But most of them have two slings with a with a bar down the middle. And if you put a double mat on there, you're just both kind of sleeping on a slope. And you sort of both roll away to the edges. Yeah. So the, the two, two singles, singles are a mu- much better option yep. there. Another question I've had all the time yeah. or get all the time, and I think you probably have too, is mm. – Will that is what what stri- what mat should I use for my swag? And the answer is pretty simple, really. Check the dimensions of your swag. Probably the best place to start is the dimensions yep. of the mat you're taking out of the swag. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to find a mat that's exactly the same. Yeah, find something that's pretty close. Um, preferably 
shorter Less, or, yeah. or narrower, not longer. It's going to be harder to fit something in that's longer or yeah. wider. You know, a centimetre or two is probably all right. Yeah. But it doesn't matter like 1,100 meter, 1100 meter, 1100 um, centimetre wide swag, sorry, 1,100 millimetre, <laughs> third time lucky. Yeah. Um, you could put a 90 centimetre wide mat in it. Of course you can. The swag's still going to work. You're just going to yeah. have storage for your gear. If it's just one person, that, that's fine. Yeah. So – just choose a mat that works for you. Make sure it's long enough for you. Mm-hmm. If, if you're really short, you don't even have to get a mat that fills the entire length of the swag. Yeah, exactly. If you do want something that fills the entire, you know, base of the swag, then look for something the in that brand mm-hmm. um, that fits like Dutch da- all-terrain, all-terrain mats. mats are made mm-hmm. to fit a 900, 1100, 1400 swag. Yeah. So um, otherwise, if you want to upgrade to like an Xped Mega Mat, then they don't come in all those different dimensions. You're stuck with – is it 80 wide, I think? Yeah, best 77, I think. 77, yep. Um, yep. By 192 or whatever it is long or 210. Just got to pick your best fit. Just got to just gotta go with that. So yeah. The other thing is if you can roll your the mattress up to store it, you can roll it up within a swag. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, if you if, if, if that's a mattress that you can physically roll up when you're chucking it in the cupboard, if you're using it for car camping, mm. you can also roll it up inside your swag. It protects it too. I keep my self-inflating mat in the swag. Yeah. It's protected by the – and I use it in the tent. Yeah. So it's, when it's on the roof, it's protected by the canvas. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good. And, and it's I awesome. store it in the, in the shed like that too. All right. Anyway, I think that's it for Matt's. But it is. A story of the week. It's the exciting bit of the episode. <laughs> yeah. So everyone sit around and wait for. So recently, we, as we often do, third hand information um, through other areas of Snowies, which is cool, is uh, somebody recently had a rooftop tent. It was relatively brand new. I think it might have even been their first trip out on it. And in the afternoon, when they were not in it, fortunately, a stomping huge monster of a branch fell from the canopy of the trees around them straight through the rooftop tent, ripped all the canvas, giant gaping holes, all the mesh hanging down, chunks of like logs and bark and bits and pieces inside the rooftop carnage. tent. It was <laughs> carnage. If, if there were people in there, they would have died, I reckon, yeah. or been really badly injured. Outside of a hammered in the, yeah. the, the, you know, what is it, aluminium molding or whatever oh, it is? Yeah, the base plates and stuff. Yeah. It just, yeah. it's crazy. So yeah. I saw photos. You shared it with me. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, an um, eye opening um, photo that makes you not want to camp under trees. Not want to camp under trees at all. If I was under that. And I'd- I think for me, obviously, General rule of thumb when you're camping, don't camp under trees. Like that's – but, you know, also there is a certain trade-off there because it's like, well, if you need shade and it's really hot and there's always – you always got to weigh up these things, right, when you're camping. The thing that I found interesting is there is, you know, a photo of of the dude holding the actual branch, obviously not including the chunks that have broken off and landed inside the the, but. It wouldn't necessarily be a branch that you would look at and mm. think if that fell, that would do a lot of damage because it wasn't overly thick. It was very long. It was like seven metres long or something, but it was mostly quite thin. But obviously the weight of it and how far it fell and, you yeah. know, and I just thought for me, my perspective, I was like, oh, that branch is way thinner than I thought it would be for yeah. the damage that's occurred to that tent. Yeah. So. You wouldn't even maybe take that risk if you pull up and you're like, I really need some shade and there's only a couple of thinner branches yeah. up there. Just don't, still don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, just Crazy. have a look up and around. Try and stay clear of any falling branches. You can still take advantage of shade if you camped not far from the tree yeah. in the afternoon and morning sun. So. Try the cast of the shade. But anyway, anyway that was really crazy yeah. and stay safe out there, rooftop tenters. <laughs> don't camp under – well, any tenters. Any tenters, don't yeah, camp that's true. Under, roof, under branches and that branch will put a hole – in your air mat yes <laughs> that's a nice one thanks right. for tuning in for another episode guys don't forget again to subscribe wherever you're listening and we will catch you later next week see you later